Welcome to the video. Hot start today. I am starting the video with the burner already on. It doesn't get much more Aries than that. So we're cooking. Welcome to the video. Making pasta. I think everyone can agree that the boring part of making pasta is making the pasta. <laughs> You're just boiling water, putting something in the boiling water, and then waiting. So I decided to get started on that before you even showed up. Welcome. You're late. Have a seat. I'll get your tardy slip to you later. I'll fax it to you. Welcome to the video. I am going to be making some delicious pasta today. As you can tell by recent videos, I like pasta. I like it. It's good. And if you don't like it, you're wrong and that's fine. Go to the wrong section in the back over there, over by the left where the trash can is. That's where the people who don't like pasta can sit. You know, it's fine. I respect your decision. Just sit by the trash can, please. More specifically though, I'm going to be making some mac and cheese and I've made mac and cheese on this channel before. Okay. I made all different types of mac and cheese, easy mac, box mac and cheese, and I've made a beautiful casserole of mac and cheese as well. I've made it all, but I wanted to try something completely new. And the only reason I'm able to try something completely new here is because I found this mushroom a while back. If you'll recall, I made lobster rolls with mushrooms. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the lobster mushroom. This is what it looks like. It's incredibly bizarre. Very, very bizarre stuff. It is literally a mushroom, it smells like seafood. I think like a, like a lobster. Hold that thought. Hold it. I'm trying to make sure this is al dente or to the tooth. Anyway, I've completely hot started this video. So if you're not warmed up now, get warm. We're going, we're moving, we're doing it. Welcome to the video. Cooking lobster mac and cheese without lobster. So to make our mac and cheese, we are going to be doing the roux method. Okay. I've made cheese sauces here before where I mix potatoes and nutritional yeast and cashews and all sorts of stuff. I've blended it up and done all these different tricks. Now, today we're going old fashioned. Old fashioned. We're making a good old fashioned roux. If you don't like making it with the roux method, that's fine. No need to be rude. Sorry. That was cheesy. You clicked on this video. No one told you to. You decided to do that. This is what you get. We done here? This is the rigatoni. It's not done. Still a little bit firm. You're going to need some stuff for this recipe. You're going to need a lobster mushroom. You got to look that up online and buy it from a weird, uh, maybe a little bit shifty website that you're not sure what, what's going on, but you got to take the risk. Okay. You're going to need some cheese. Since we're making a roux, you're going to need some flour. You're going to need some milk. We're going to be using macadamia nut milk because I've heard it's pretty good to cook with and I heard it's pretty creamy. So we're going to go with that. And then the pasta of choice, we are going with rigatoni. All right. So I have my cheeses. I have my mushroom, my mushroom, which is bizarre. And then I have my pasta. We're going to start obviously by getting the pasta al dente. We want it to be cooked and ready, slightly underdone, which is what al dente means or refers to so that at the end, when the roux is completely finished, we'll put the pasta in the roux. Let's test this. Is this ready? You guys want to be the taste tester to see if the pasta is ready? Mmm, that's al dente. No, that's a little raw. It's like another minute to al dente. So the order that we're going to do this in is we are going to chop and steam our mushroom or our lobster. And we're going to do that just to get some of the bitterness out and to cook it a little bit. It's already pretty soft. It's not like obviously like real meat. So you don't need to cook it through. It's just a plant, but we're going to steam it just to kind of go through the motions. Once it's been steamed for a minute, we're going to throw some butter in there and saute it a little bit, get a little bit of brown on the edges and get some buttery flavor in there. And then we're going to set the mushroom aside to add completely at the end of the recipe. I've never had lobster mac and cheese. I've heard it's pretty good. I am just a big fan of mac and cheese and I'm open to trying new things. Okay. That's why we're here. We're trying new things together. Unless you don't like pasta, then you don't get to try new things. Pasta is done. How quick was that? Amazing. Don't go anywhere, please. Please don't go anywhere. Please don't leave my channel. So the pasta has been cooked to the tooth, you know, and so it's chilling uh, in some cold water so it doesn't cook any further. We're going to get our pieces now of mushroom out on the table. If you don't like seafood, maybe just skip this part. I don't know. Maybe just make a mac and cheese again. It, this is a lobster mushroom. Okay. It's a mushroom that 
very much resembles that of lobster meat. Uh, so we're going to cut this into little pieces uh, similarly sized to that of lobster and a mac and cheese. Again, I didn't do a ton of research on the actual process of cooking a lobster to make lobster mac and cheese because it kind of doesn't apply since we're using a plant. So forgive me if I'm doing this wrong, but at the same time, I don't really care because it's just, it's going to be shitty anyway. Remember, look down, look down below. That's, look what channel you're on. It's going to be shitty. So I'm just going to start to kind of cut it into little bite-sized pieces, I guess. I might leave these two out. I don't need a ton of this. Yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll include this. Also, some pieces just kind of seem like they're better than others. Like some are harder to clean and some are a little softer and squishier. So you want to find like pieces that have like a firmness to them, I think. Again, that is if you decided to go through the backwoods of the internet to find this plant. <laughs> anyway, this is kind of what we're working with here. Just, um, I don't know, maybe about a cup and a half of little, little bite-sized pieces of... What's that noise? Of fake uh, lobster. So this is it. And now we are going to steam it. All right, I put a couple tablespoons of water onto our pan here. Perfect. And we are just gonna steam it real quick until all the water kind of disappears. A very short steam, maybe just a minute or two to get a little bit of that initial bitterness off. It's sort of just like a preliminary cook. Obviously with real lobster, you would wanna cook however long it takes. I don't know how to, how to cook seafood, but let's pour it in. We'll steam it and then we'll get it nice and buttered up. All right, let's cover that. All right, I'm actually gonna try to like chop these bigger pieces a little bit because I think should be a little bit smaller than they are. I don't know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how this is supposed to be, okay? Hopefully if lobster mac and cheese is something that you love and consider yourself a connoisseur of, I will, I will do you proud here. But if it's, you know, if it's a disgrace, again, remember where you are. <laughs> All right, this steam feels pretty adequate. So I'm gonna go drain this water and get the butter in here. So let's keep this on some good heat. We got about medium high here. This butter has melted, so I'm gonna just kind of pour a little bit in here. And the idea is not only to get some butter flavor going here, but to get maybe a very slight, very slight brown on these little lobster pieces. All right, so at this point, the mushroom, AKA lobster, is looking real nice. It's to the point where the edges are crisping up a little bit, and it's got a little bit more of like a golden color due to the butter and cooking it a little bit. But I don't think we should overcook this, because I think it, they still need to be chewy. They can't be burnt. They, they don't want to be too crispy. So I think this will be a good stopping point. What do you think? Does it look good? Are we ready? Want a bite? There you go. Let's pop these pieces into the bowl. Beautiful, that is nice. That's what we're looking for right there. This is what our lobster looks like. Interesting, ready to go. We'll see how it goes. All right, so we have our pasta done. Al dente, chilling over there. We have our lobster cooked, ready to go in the pasta. Last thing we gotta do is the roux, okay? The roux is easily the most important part of a good mac and cheese or a good cheese sauce in general. And fair warning, I might completely fuck it up, but I'm gonna do my best. I did a little research and I know that timing and proportions are huge with the roux. And also heat level. You wanna keep a good consistent heat level. You don't wanna get it too hot, but proportions are very important. So we are gonna add this Colby Jack Vial Life and this mozzarella Vial Life as well as some fresh shredded farmhouse cheddar later on. That doesn't go in yet. We start with butter and flour. The goal is to get the butter and the flour mixed nicely. Once that's together, then we start to add the milk and we keep it whisking, right? And that's gonna be the base, or kind of like a white base sauce for the roux. Then we're gonna add the cheese later, and then we're gonna add the pasta, then we're gonna be done, and we're gonna be stuffing our face with lobster mac and cheese, dude. So excited. Did I do that in my head or out loud? First things first, we are running pretty low on butane. So I'm going to preemptively pop a, 
a new tank in. All right, and we'll set that aside. So the video I watched, and I'm blindly following it because they probably know more than me, told me that I want to have a four to five ratio of tablespoons of butter to flour. So we need five tablespoons of flour. One, two, three, four, five. And four tablespoons of butter, which ours is kind of melted, but one, two, three, and four. So we have four to five ratio here. This is what we're going for. Okay, so we have our butter and our flour. That's what's gonna go in the pot first to mix. Another important thing you wanna do is heat the milk. So I'm gonna pour our milk. I'm gonna pour probably more than we're gonna use because you wanna have milk ready and on hand because you just don't know when you're gonna need it to thin some, some of the roux out. I'm gonna get our milk in our cup here and I'm going to microwave this for a couple minutes. You want this to be hot. Apparently that's a really important part of this recipe or of a roux in general is you don't wanna shock the roux mixture with cold milk. I think that causes clumping and can make the roux not as beautiful and easy as you would like it to be. So off to the microwave. Are roux ready to begin? All right, so we want medium heat. An important thing you're gonna need for this is a whisk, okay? I have my rubber whisk because I don't wanna ruin the nonstick here. Again, first thing is gonna be butter and flour. So let's add that. Let's get the butter completely melted. I'm pretty sure this milk is pretty hot. It went in the microwave for three minutes, so I'm slowly gonna add this to our roux while I whisk. Ooh, baby. Just make sure you spill the milk everywhere. I might have added a little too much. It's already incredibly thick. I'm gonna add all the milk and actually emergency heat up the last bit. Oh, it's getting wild. I think four tablespoons of butter and five tablespoons of flour might have been a lot. Or did I read it wrong? Maybe it was teaspoons. Oh no. Did I read it wrong? Oh no, was it teaspoons? Oh God. Three tablespoons of butter, four tablespoons of flour. Okay, I did one more tablespoon than the recipe called for, but I didn't fuck up from tablespoons to teaspoons, so it's real thick. This shit is real thick. I don't think it's supposed to be this thick yet, but also we have to keep in mind that there's gonna be a difference in our results because of the fact that we're using plant-based ingredients, which I'm always fine with, because it's worth it. Yeah, I think it's a little too thick still. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit more macadamia milk, okay, just to thin it out, because I, I think as of right now, it should be a little thinner at this stage. And I'm lowering the heat almost all the way. This is a hectic cheese sauce right here. So I think a good way to tell if the white base sauce is ready is if you put a spoon or a spatula in it and it coats the whole thing, like that, okay? So ours is ready for the next step. All right, so our next step is gonna be add a pinch of salt, about like a teaspoon, and some black pepper. Freshly crushed black pepper, okay? Always fresh black pepper, always. Stir that in, get that nice and mixed. Let's do a quick little taste to see how. Mm. Need a little more salt. Definitely need a little more salt. We're making a roux, baby. All right, let's taste another little bit. All right, I think you could also use a little more pepper. Shut up, shut up, shut, shut up. Oh my God, that is so annoying. All right, we're gonna add the rest of our macadamia milk here because we want it to be just a touch thinner before we add our cheeses. Now, we're gonna add some mozzarella and some Colby Jack to our situation here. All 
our roux is looking pretty cheesy, pretty nice, actually pretty smooth. It's gotten to be like this very pale orange color, which I think is pretty much what we want. I'm just gonna let it heat a little bit longer so that the last little few bits of cheese can melt because each we're using different vegan cheeses and they all melt differently. So this is really dope. I'm actually proud of this. Let's taste it. Oh my God, that is delicious. Holy crap. All right, so we're gonna add our pasta directly into the cheese sauce. We can take the whisk out. We are done whisking. Now let's get the spatula and let's pour that pasta. I'm gonna be honest, okay? This looks insanely good. Like, maybe the best mac and cheese I've ever made. And I'm gonna be honest, I just reserved a couple bites, maybe like a bowl of this and the excess sauce off to the side in case our lobster mushrooms betray us. I'm counting on you. I don't want them to betray us, but we have to be ready, okay? We can't sacrifice this whole pot of mac and cheese if this doesn't turn out good. So, I reserved some. I mean, this is looking so insanely delicious. You want a bite? Oh my God, dude. This looks so bomb. All right, well, let's try a tiny bite. No, let's put the lobster in, fuck it. Lobster is in, now we stir. Oh my God, look at this. This is wild. That looks about as good as I could have hoped it would come out looking. So let's take a bite. My mouth is watering, I'm so excited right now. I made a root, I made my own mac and cheese and I have fake lobster in here. Will the lobster ruin it? Moment of truth here. No, it doesn't ruin it. I'm not sure what it's doing with the flavor. First of all, the mac and cheese, I knocked it out of the park, okay? I'm gonna gas myself up a little here because that is some damn good mac and cheese. I think I struck like a perfect balance of the cheeses I used because holy crap, it just tastes really good. The texture is great. It's like super creamy and not too rich. Like some mac and cheeses, I feel like you take a bite and you wanna take a nap. This one's, it's light and it's got this smoothness to it that doesn't overwhelm you, but it has, Clearly, you know, there's teamwork happening here. There's a lot of teamwork, okay? Because there's multiple different cheeses that you can see, different colors, different flavors. Why haven't I done this before? Making a roux is easy, all right? It's not quite as easy as making box mac and cheese, but you also don't get this from box mac and cheese. I can't tell if I would have been a fan of real lobster mac and cheese back in the day. Like, I don't know if that would have been my thing or not. I wasn't a huge seafood person. And to be perfectly honest, this might be unpopular, but I kind of feel like mac and cheese is fine. I don't think it needs any help, but I'm happy we tried. It gives it a whole new dimension with the fake lobster. I've been impressed with this lobster since the last time I used it. When I made lobster rolls, it holds up in the texture department. It holds up in the taste department and it definitely holds up in the appearance department. I mean, I'm pretty sure that looks exactly like Lobster mac is supposed to. Maybe I'm completely wrong. I don't know. It's really good. That's one thing I know, is really fucking good. So, you know what? If buying exotic mushrooms off the internet isn't your thing, I would still encourage you to try making a roux because it's easier than I thought it was. And holy crap, is it good. Also, mac and cheese like this, where you just add all the cheese in the roux and it's all creamy and you just eat it right away, is better than casserole mac and cheese where there's a crest on top. Fight me about it. Fight me about it. 
I'm right, okay? There's no way creamy mac and cheese loses to casserole mac and cheese. Fight me about it. I'll take your fight. Mm, poke you. Well, I'm in cheese heaven right now. Definitely think you should try making this. I may have an addiction to mac and cheese. I might. Also, don't worry, okay? Because my addiction to mac and cheese, it's only a mild addiction, like mild cheddar. My addiction's mild like mild cheddar.